Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be a Mermail Atlantean combo tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you a way to take your opponent's full six cards away from them in a post-Firewalls banned world. Basically, the combos I used to show on this channel involved, you know, doing a lot of cool Firewall shenanigans with Galaxy Tomahawk and all that to get your Dragoons back to hand, discard them for Nightmare Mermaid, and, like, trigger the Dragoons effect to search, like, Moulin Glacier or some shit and then led into like extra links with Gumblar and you took all six cards away from your opponent's hand through a combination of Moulin Glacia and Gumblaring, triggering the Gumblar with things like either your Abyss Sphere or with Link Karibo from Grave. But with Firewall Band, it definitely becomes significantly less potent of a board that you end on, but you can still very easily take all six cards away from your opponent with variations of Gumblar combos. And so what I'm going to show you today is the two-card combo of Abyssteus plus Atlantean Dragoons. There are a bunch of different two-card combos that can do this, including cards that you can play in Mermails like Brilliant Fusion, because the Water Gym Knight just happens to be a level 7, which means that you get to do Tomahawk plays with it. There's a lot of nifty little shit that you get to do. Um, but basically, resolving Gumblar for, uh, for like the extra link effect is really hard without a card like Soul Charge. Um, and you obviously want to be structuring the plays that you do to put a little bit, like, you know, more emphasis on keeping cards in your hand for Gumblar. Um, and that also reflects, like, how you probably should be building the deck. I mean, I'm by no means a complete Mermail deck expert. I just tinker with it in my free time. But, like, cards that I tend to gravitate more towards now are cards like Salvage that gets back cards as a plus one to then further fuel, you know, going into Gumblar and doing stuff like that. But, so, before I show you this combo, if you want to see more combo tutorials or more content on the channel in general, I would implore you to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications if you do not want to miss an upload. I'd love to welcome you on board, and I'd love to have you sitting around and giving feedback and stuff like that. But also, links are in the description to my Twitch page, where if you want to catch my streams that happen several times a week, you can go follow that. And if you want to join the channel's Discord server, link to that is in the description down below as well. But with that out of the way... This is going to be Teus plus Atlantean Dragoons, which is just one of the many two-card variations of plays you can do to do a Gumblar play for five or for six. Now, this one's going to be for the full six. But So you're going to use the Teus, you're going to discard the Dragoons, you're going to use the Teus to add Gun to your hand, and then you're going to use Dragoons to add Deep Sea Diva. That's why this play has to start with Dragoons for this specific uh, iteration, is because we do need Deep Sea Diva. It is very, very integral to how this is going to be structured. But so, you normal summon the Deep Sea Diva, use the Deep Sea Diva's effect to get Neptibus from the deck, and then you're going to use the Neptibus's effect, sending Dragoons to Grave, adding Dragoons to hand. Dragoons being at three again after so long, uh, still doesn't quite feel real, even though it like came back to three like back in May. <laughs> like it still doesn't feel real. Uh, but still, what you're gonna add here off of this Dragoons triggering in your grave is going to be Mermail Abyss Megalo. And then we're going to start getting rid of stuff for economy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Neptibus and the Abyssteus to go into Reprodocus. And then now that we've got the Teus engraved, we are going to trigger the Megalo, discarding Gund and the Dragoons. And we're going to summon the Megalo way over here out of the way. The Dragoons will trigger, the Gund will trigger, and the Abyss Megalo will trigger. Now the Gund is going to bring back the Teus, because in this instance that's the only card that's in our grave. And this Megalo is going to search for Abyss Sphere, which is going to be how we're going to be triggering Gumblar on our opponent's turn. Because it's really hard for you to set up a Neptibus on the field to tribute for Link Rebo now with Firewall Dragon gone. But so, Teus comes back over here, and then what you're going to be searching off of your Dragoons is Moulin Glacia. Now this combo does put Moulin Glacia on the field and then Link away with it, which means that you do not get a battle phase during your next turn. But that's completely fine because your opponent should not be able to play any cards the entirety of the game. Unless they're playing a danger deck. In which case, you doing these plays is literally putting yourself into your own grave. But so, as you can see, we've got five waters in grave after this combo, uh, after this uh, sequencing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to special the Moulin Glace under the Reaper Dacus. The Moulin Glace is going to take two cards out of our opponent's hand. Now from here, we're going to use Reaper Dacus to change the type of our Moulin Glacia from a sea serpent into a dinosaur, and then we're going to step up into the amazing, super fair card for the game, Summon Sorceress. And so now from here we've got these two level 7s left over and a level 2 tuner left over. So what we're going to be doing is making Galaxy Tomahawk under this Summon Sorceress zone, and then we're going to use Galaxy Tomahawk detaching the two cards from it to summon three tokens. So. It's not really like a full value Galaxy Tomahawk because you could easily have like started with Neptibus and done the same play in some uh, variation 
and not had the diva floating on the field but the diva here actually makes it much better for the ending uh, like uh, the ending situation that we're going to be ending on after this combo is fulfilled uh, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making Cypher and Lord Omega which also just happens to serve double purpose of vacating the zone that Summon Sorceress is pointing to so that we can use its effect. Uh, so, like, it's more than worthwhile to be doing it in this way if you have the capability to. Especially since it's purely a two-card combo. It doesn't involve any outside cards in your hand like a water or anything like that. But so you make Cypher and Lord Omega with your level 2 Tuner Diva and one of your level 6 non-tuner tokens. And you're going to use the Omega. And this Omega is actually great because it's a floating beater. Uh, it starts to recoup your own resources because you do naturally banish cards with this deck with the card you're about to see me play. And then also, the way that it structures your play into the following turn, since you don't have a battle phase, means that it gives you a lot of different things to work around with. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second. But so, the main thing the Omega did is it made itself and then got itself out of the Summon Sorceress zone. So now we get to use it targeting our machine Galaxy Tomahawk to summon Christron Fistfern from our deck. And so this and the other Christron you saw in the deck, Rosenix, these are like unnine targets, but you can also just summon them here. And this also serves another purpose of putting another card in your hand, meaning that you can Gumblar for more cards in different combo sequences as well as this one. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to link the... Uh, the Galaxy Tomahawk and the token into a Nightmare Phoenix or Cerberus or whatever. It just has to be a Nightmare. It doesn't matter which side of the board you're going on. I like to end on Cerberus, so I use Phoenix first. But so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Gumbla, our Gumbla Dragon with Summon Sorceress and the Thistvern into this zone next to Nightmare Phoenix. And then from here, we're going to activate the Thistvern to search for Rosenix. That's why we got Thistvern from deck so that we could banish it and search for Rosenix. And now that it's a banished card, Rosenix is also capable of banishing itself to summon a token, and then you are able to put that back in your grave uh, off Cyframe Lord Omega w during your opponent's standby phase on the following turn, after all is said and done. And then that means that you do have a consistent source of just an extra monster being spawned, which is actually really nice and nifty. But so, in this instance, we're going to set the Abyss Sphere, because that's how we're going to be triggering Gumblar on the opponent's turn. And then we're going to go into Nightmare Mermaid on top of the Gumblar. The Mermaid is going to trigger its effect. We're going to discard the Christron Rosenix. And we're going to get Nightmare Corruptor Ibli from our deck. And then we're going to draw a card off the Mermaid because it's co-linked with the Gumblar. And then the Gumblar is going to discard two cards from our hand. And then discard the last two cards from our opponent's hand. Now one thing that I do particularly like about this combo sequence is because it is still my turn. But I took all five of my opponent's cards away. There's none of that uh, taking four during my turn and then taking two during theirs and like possibly triggering multiple graveyard effects or whatever that were the same names like multiple danger Nessies or whatever. No, you get all of the cards away. Uh, but obviously, like I previously said, if you're playing as a danger deck and you start doing this, <laughs> peace be with you because it's not going to be a good time for you in any capacity. But so, what I'm gonna, what I do to end this off is that. I use the Ibli and the token that's left over to go into Nightmare Cerberus. The Ibli triggers going to my opponent's side of the field. So now my opponent's locked out of special summoning as well. And if I'm playing at Sky Striker, it also affects the ways like that they're not able to play. They're not able to play Engage, any of those other cards. Um, and if they were to top deck, like uh, if I were to be playing at Sky Striker and I took all five cards away, put like four spells in Grave or whatever, and they top deck Ray. Uh, they couldn't go Ray into Kagari to add back, like, a graveyard and engage or whatever, because this would still be on their field. Even though they are making a Link Monster in the form of Kagari, uh, like, the Nightmare Corruptor Ibli still just being there is a huge problem. So, there's, uh, there's a lot of benefit of this being there. Uh, also, in, in, like, I wish that it could go there earlier, to be honest, because if it could go there earlier, then it would stop things like Danger Sukunoko and, uh, and uh, Jackalope and Chupacabra and stuff from triggering. Uh, but, I mean, I digress. But so what you have from here is that this is the ending board you're on. You've got this Rosenix that's staying in Grave, but it spawns a token if you want it to, which if you have more cards to put into the board, like if you had like a Nimble Angler that got discarded off this Gumblar, then that'd be insane because you'd get two more cards, and then you'd uh, be able to get uh, a token from there and like just continue Link plays up. Obviously, Soul Charge would be kind of ignorant, because then you'd be able to make a full extra link and do the extra link play with Gumblar uh, pretty easily. But, 
carrying on from what we have here. In just this instance of just this two card combo, you're going to pass turn, and then during your opponent's draw phase, you are going to flip the Abyss Sphere face up, and you're just going to summon whatever Mermail from your deck that you uh, feel is you know suitable next to the Gumblar, and then you are going to declare one card, one, because your opponent only has one. So you're going to discard one, and then your opponent discards the last card in their hand. And so this is really nice. I really like this because it means that through the searching of the uh, of the Rosenix by getting Thisvern, that means we get to keep cards in our hand. Because we only had to Gumblar for three, we only had to discard three of our own cards because we used Cypher and Lord Omega, which also has added benefit of being a floating body. And another thing that I'm going to get to in just a moment. And then... Uh, like, you could just easily augment the amount of cards you're discarding off Gumblar with power cards that add back cards like Salvage and stuff like that as well. But so, your opponent ends their turn, this stuff dies, you draw your card for turn, your Omega comes back, and their card comes back, right? But so, what I like about this, we don't have a battle phase this turn because we linked away with the Mulan Glacia. Mulan Glacia makes us skip our battle phase. Uh, so if I were to enter my battle phase, it would just immediately go to my main phase 2 and end my turn, is uh, how I think the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pl uh, Pro client still works. But so what you do from here is actually pretty, pretty cool. That Rosenix, we're going to utilize it. And so we summon a token next to the Gumblar. And now Gumblar gets to trigger, discarding one. That one card that your opponent got back off the Omega goes to Grave now. And so now you're able to link this away into something. Like, you can make it into Link Karibo or whatever. It's truly up to you. Can you even make it into Link Karibo? Have I used my Link Karibo? Or did I take it out of the deck? I think I just took it out of the deck. Whatever. You can make Link Spider. You can do whatever with it. It doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. Because um, you're just going to put it back in the Rosenix back into your grave off of the Omega during your opponent's standby phase anyway. But what I like about this... We don't have a battle phase. What I like about this is the fact that... During the standby phase, this Omega is going to put back this Rosenix, which means that that's more monster resources. But if your opponent is playing on one card, right, they're not going to be doing a whole lot. But if that card was something that could be activated to replace itself, you can Omega that card out of their hand. So you're keeping your opponent at the lowest amount of cards that they could possibly play. And that's what I like about this specific combo sequence. Uh, there are a few different ones uh, that include playing like um, Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion because it's a level 2 machine tuner where you can summon that out of your deck in the same way that we put the D.Va on the board. You can summon it out of your deck by targeting your uh, Galaxy Tomahawk and summoning it into the other summon source zone. There's lots of different ways for you to get to Omega with the Mermel deck. Whether you're opening Neptibus um, and like Brilliant Fusion plus a Water or like Neptibus Nimble Angler. There's lots of different ways for you to get a lot of uh, value on the board. Um, in terms of combo plays. There's even a play that's uh, Teus plus Angler that gets you at least five cards discarded, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways you can play this deck, and I actually I really like tinkering with it in my free time, but I'm in no way super dedicated to like playing Mermel strategies. So there's obviously going to be somebody that could look at these combos that's better with the deck than I am, and is capable of improving them and like trimming down on certain fatty areas that don't need to happen. Uh, but... I mean, I just like the moving parts of this deck, and so I just put, I look for combos and put cards in until I see things working, and then if there are cards that could be played in the deck on a regular basis and not be too big of a problem, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is reasonable. <laughs> so, anyway, that's basically what I wanted to show you for this video. Uh, there's a couple different Mermel combos I might show you uh, in other videos, like Neptubus plus Brilliant Fusion. That's a really interesting one. Uh, the other interesting one, I think I already said it, is Teus plus Nimble Angler. That's a really interesting one because it doesn't involve you summoning Neptibus until literally the end of the combo. <laughs> so you've already like established Gumblar and then you're summoning Neptibus. It's really interesting, but those will be the videos for another day. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on this and Mermails and stuff in general in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts and stuff and questions, comments, concerns, all that jazz. As I've already previously said, Subscribe if you're new here. I want to see more content like this. Enable notifications. I'd love to welcome you on board. And like I said previously as well, links are in the description to my Twitch page and the channel's personal Discord server. And I stream multiple times a week over on that Twitch page. So if you want to follow that and uh, enable notifications there as well so that you do not miss a weeknight stream. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your time as usual. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.